So you got your product, you've got your customers, but how are you going to address them? This is when you need a business model coming up now. Hi, I'm Oliver and thank you for tuning in again. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and pushing that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when we're uploading new videos. And of course, you know, it helps to push out to the algorithm. All right, so you got your company, you're very excited, you got your product or your service and you got your customers. And now you're thinking, how am I going to approach them? This is what we're going to talk today. It is the functions of a business model. So the business model actually describes how an organization captures, delivers, and creates value. A business model does not or should not be mistaken by a strategy that is on how I'm going to achieve certain things. The business model actually is how I'm trying to set up everything and then tactics are the strategy that I'm going to use. So what possibilities do I have or what does a business model actually do for me? Well, it actually articulates the value proposition. What is it that I'm trying to give and what is the additional value that the customer would get if he buys from me? It ad identifies the market segment that I'm actually trying to reach. And it also specifies revenue generating mechanisms. I mean, I have to understand where the money is coming from and how this actually should work. Furthermore, it specifies complementary assets that are needed to support my position. Then it also defines the structure of the value chain to create and the distributing offer. It specifies the position of the firm in the value network. I mean, at the end, you have to understand what is it that the customer is going through from A to Z. Let's say he wants to create a t-shirt. So he first has to buy the t-shirt. He has to choose the right color. Then he has to bring it in. Then he might have to design it. So he needs a logo designer. Then he might need to print it and then needs to ship it. So there's a lot of things going. It's a complete value chain. And where in that chain actually are you? And what is the benefit if the customer uses yours versus another product offering or service offering? Also, the business model should enable you to give an estimation of the cost structure and the profit potential. And then it outlines the strategy to which the firm will gain and sustain the competitive advantage that you actually need to survive. So a business model consists of five elements, the revenue model, the gross margin model, the operating model, the working capital model, and the investment model. All of these we're going to deep dive into detail so you have a better understanding on how they work. Let's start with the revenue model. First thing it will ask you is who is actually going to buy from you. It also then makes you understand how many of those customers you think are going to buy from you are out there. And then you will have to answer the question, how many times are they going to buy? How often is this purchase going to happen? Is it a once in a lifetime? Is it a reoccurring purchase? And then how soon are those customers going to buy? For an example, in my industry, medical device life science, customers usually take one and a half to three years prior purchasing a product quite a long time, but then they keep on repurchasing stuff over and over again. Nonetheless, you need to understand this because it will also define your costs to acquire a customer. And then it is also important, this model also tells you how much money is actually left with you each time a customer buys. All right, so the next part is a gross margin model. This will ask you the question of how much of your revenue will be left over after paying the direct costs of what you have sold. It gives you a good idea on how profitable you can design this product or how valuable it will be for your company. The next part of the business model is what is called the operating model. So the operating model as part of the business model actually asks you on what else other than the product or service you need to spend money on to support a sale. It might be that you need to pay for marketing, that you need to pay some fees for specific associations, or that you have to maybe visit a customer very frequent prior him buying something or you have to do other types of support that will enable the customer to trust and believe in you and then start purchasing from you. And that's what the operating model will tell you. How are you strategically operating your business in a way that it supports the customer to buy? And these are all costs that you have to understand and calculate to make a proper profit at the end. Now, the fourth section is the working capital model. And that is very important for you uh, entrepreneurs and startups and small businesses out there because it actually asks a lot of questions on when and how long money will take until we actually, you know, have it in our bank account. So it is the first thing that we just how long will it take before the customer pays? Then you also have to understand how much of our money do we have to tie up in inventory just for customers waiting to buy, which is then not, of course, usable for other things. And it also you might ask the question is, am I able to pay my suppliers later than the customer pays me, which of course then also would have a larger cash flow possible for myself. And last but not least, the investment model. So the investment model actually asks you 
How much money, how much cash would you have to spend upfront before enough customers discover you and buy from you so that you can sustain your business operation independent of external investments? That is true for most startups where they have a great idea and they come up with a plan on how to get there. And that's why they go for investors to ask for funding. And these assumptions sometimes can be right, sometimes can be wrong. But nonetheless, this is a critical question to answer. And of course, it's beneficial if you find a way to lower the cost so that you do not have to spend too much upfront investment but start maintaining the business by itself this is what you should understand and that's what the investment model should help you with all right so what are the key takeaways here you haven't heard me talking a lot about technology here because fact of the matter is key takeaway number one business models are not necessarily about technology they can be but not necessarily have to be key takeaway number two is Business models work when they're executed well, which actually means that you will have to blend in managerial type of mindsets with entrepreneurial types of mindsets. And if you're not quite sure what the difference is, I'll link a video up here that you can take a deeper look at. And of course, at the end, business models, most of the time will take a long time and effort to build, pivot, adapt, that they make sense and work in the best and profitable way. And that can be sometimes a hassle. So these are the business models. If you're now, you know, thrilled up and powered up, you might want to take a look at the video that is on the screen right now to learn how to start your business from scratch. Good luck, leave a comment down below and see you next time.